Hello and welcome to this video. Today we'll be looking at a concept called short squeeze and uh, we will go through in detail about this concept, uh, the various conditions which are pre-required for a stock to be set up for short squeeze, what actually triggers the short squeeze and the important parameters that you need to look at in order to identify stocks which are uh, about to undergo a short squeeze and then we will also go to the actual Finvis platform to see the settings on a screener which basically will help us identify those stocks which are uh, going to be in a short squeeze. Uh, so we will take a look at all these details and one more thing is that I would request you to continue till the end of the video because short squeeze is a very common concept but there is a very important mistake that almost uh, most of the traders make because they only look at the percentage of shares of a, a stock which are uh, shorted. That alone is not uh, if, uh, enough to correctly identify whether a stock will be going into short squeeze or not. And also I will be discussing uh, a, par a very important parameter which will help decide uh, as to how long the short squeeze can continue. So please uh, continue till the end and uh, let's get started before we proceed a quick look at the disclaimer uh, whatever information i'm sharing with you is only for entertainment purposes please use it uh, for your trading uh, at your own discretion after you've done your thorough analysis and uh, if you if you want you can consult your financial advisor for that none of the information that i'm sharing here is any kind of trading advice so let's proceed so before we understand short squeeze, we need to understand what is the shorting of a stock. When uh, we say we are short a certain number of shares, what is exactly meant by that? And we also need to understand that how is this working behind the scenes? So logically, we would first buy something and then once we've bought something, we own something, we can sell it. So if the logical flow of things is to buy first and then to sell later, in short selling, you sell shares which you don't own, okay? So if I say I'm short 100 shares of uh, Apple, then basically what I'm implying is that I don't own any shares of Apple, but I have sold 100 shares of Apple. The objective of this exercise is uh, the same concept that you want to buy low and sell high. So when prices are low, we first buy at a lower price and then we sell at a higher price. But when prices are already high and we expect them to come down, then we sell first and buy later at a lower price. So short selling is basically a technique which helps traders and investors make money because of the downward move in a stock. But how does it actually happen? How can you sell something which you don't even own? So the concept here is that all of us, when we trade, we basically trade via a broker. So that broker is able to lend us shares which we want to short. So let's say I want to sell 100 shares of Apple and I don't own those 100 shares. Then if I place an order to short sell those 100 shares, my broker whomever uh, with whomever I'm uh, trading, they will basically lend me 100 shares and technically I will be able to sell those shares in the market. But those shares are definitely not mine so i need the, that's an open position and i will need to buy that back at a later point in time at some time okay so the broker will definitely uh, ask for some amount of money to be kept as margin for such a position so that at a later time in case you have to buy back those shares you have enough liquidity or enough cash in your uh, uh, account to support that transaction. So what is the concept? Why do we basically see a short squeeze? So the starting point is to understand how the short selling of shares works. So now let's say I have borrowed 100 shares and I have sold them in the market. What is my possible profit potential? My possible profit is the price at which I sold the shares. Let's say I sold Apple shares at $100. Then the maximum profit can be made if the share price goes all the way down to zero. So I sold shares at 100 and I'll buy them back at zero. That means I'll make 100 
dollars per share so if i'm selling 100 shares i made 10000 dollars but this would rarely happen because unless a company is filing for bankruptcy the share price is not going to go down to zero so the upward potential for short sellers is limited but what is the max loss and this is a very important concept what is the max loss for short sellers if you calculate it the max loss for short sellers is actually infinite because theoretically apple may be trading at a hundred dollars it can go to as high as ten thousand dollars a hundred thousand dollars or any infinite amount and if you sold something at hundred and you need to buy back at a thousand then you're basically making a $900 loss per share, right? Because you're sold, selling something at 100, you're buying back at 1,000. So the difference is 900, and this 900 is a loss per share to the person who went short on the stock. So short selling is very, very risky because you're selling shares and your upside potential is limited, but your downside potential is unlimited. And since you are on borrowed shares, you've borrowed the uh, shares from the broker so what happens is there there are two things which will happen which will basically trigger a short squeeze so let's look at that so so preconditions wise the the how the setup for the short squeeze works is if of only a few people are short selling then it's not a problem but let's say uh, a high percentage of the overall tradable shares in the market have been sold short so let's say there is a company and they have a 1 million shares which are tradable in the market so that is called the float out of these shares let's say 30 percent of the shares have been borrowed and sold short in the market then the short interest or the short float will be 30 percent now 30 percent 40 percent 50 percent short floats are really high short floats or short interest ratios what this means is that for every share let's say the short float is 50 percent what does that mean that for every two shares being traded one of the shares is borrowed and it has been sold short so this is the first concept the second thing is called the short ratio what is the short ratio so the short ratio means uh, let's say percentage wise you have a 50 percent short float right but this particular stock is traded in such high volumes that on a daily basis this 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 company that i just gave the example let's say only a million shares are available in the market but this company is so popular it's so highly traded that on a daily basis two million shares are traded so 1 million shares is the total amount of shares uh, tradable shares in the market and 2 million shares are being traded on a daily basis we said the short float was 50 percent that means out of the 1 million shares 50 percent of that that is 500,000 shares were short sold so it would just take one fourth of a trading day to cover all that short position in other words the short interest basically tells us out of the total tradable shares how much percentage have been short sold the short ratio basically tells us how many days based on the average trading volume would it take for the shorts to cover their position okay we'll take a look at a practical example so you'll understand it better there but the the reason why the short ratio is important is because if the short ratio let's say reaches a value of 20 what does that mean that means forget about the percentage of shares being shorted here just looking at the high short ratio what i can see is that based on the average traded volumes per day it will take about 20 days for the short sellers to cover their positions that means this short squeeze if it gets triggered will last for a pretty long time at the current average volumes the short squeeze can last for as long as five to ten days why am i saying five to ten days because 20 days is the total volume it is the total time required for all short sellers to cover the short squeeze can continue as long as there are significant number of short sellers right 
so let's say as long as half of the 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 shorted shares still exist uh, the short squeeze can continue so for completely buying back all the shorted shares it takes 20 days for buying back half of those shares and reducing reducing the short interest to half its value it will probably take 10 days so with the short ratio we can get some idea as to how long the short squeeze is going to continue we'll get into more details and i'll basically cover a few examples on the finviz platform so there you'll understand it better now what triggers the squeeze and this is very interesting because you already have a lot of shares shorted right so there are two things which trigger the short squeeze the first thing that triggers the short squeeze is basically the stop losses so let's say i as i gave the earlier example i am shorting shares of apple at 100 dollars now i don't want to make unlimited losses right i know my loss potential in this trade when i'm shorting shares is unlimited so what i will do is i will put a stop loss order at 105 dollars that means i'm selling 100 shares of apple at 100 dollars each but i am also putting a stop loss order that if the price of apple were to go against me in this case if the price of apple starts increasing the moment it reaches 105 dollars i want to buy back that position so what will happen i would have bought shares at 105 and initially i sold at 100 so i will just make a loss of 5 dollars per share and that is a stop loss which i am putting in so for some reason if some catalyst comes in it could be a news event it could be the reddit forums where the wall street bets forums and other places where people just get together and start buying shares and jacking up the price or it could be an institutional investment coming in which in which raises the price whatever reason is there but if you have a sh- high short interest or let's first of all consider let's consider that i have gone 100 uh, shares short for apple and for some reason the price of apple goes to 105 then what happens my stop loss is triggered and i am the system automatically buy, buys back those shares for me right so what we are seeing here is as the price keeps going up all the stop losses that different people would have put now i put the stop loss at 105 somebody would have put it at 103 somebody would have put it at 108 so as the stop as the price has start going up all those people who have shorted their stocks at some point their stop losses will hit and they will start the system will start their brokers will start buying back the shares for them when this buying back happens what happens when there is a huge demand and there is a lot of buying pressure the prices go up so already something started driving the prices up as the short sellers are closing their positions they are being forced to buy shares and this buying pressure further keeps pushing the prices up as the price goes up further more and more short sellers need to cover their positions because their stop losses are being hit and this kind of becomes a, a rolling snowball effect where the ball keeps getting bigger and bigger and this becomes a kind of a self fulfilling prophecy because the 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 price going up will trigger the buying from the short sellers and that buying in turn will uh, send the price further towards the upside so so this process will continue till the time the short selling is exhausted and this is where i was bringing in the concept of short ratio that we need to get to a point where most or significant number of the short positions are now closed so this is the reason this is how the short selling works and i gave you one reason the second reason is again some catalyst triggers the price but now it's not just the stop losses being uh, triggered which is forcing the buyback of the shares the brokers because brokers have lended their shares right they don't want to take any losses so people first thing what the brokers will do is they will uh, send out margin calls they will ask for more and more money because if somebody is gone short a stock and the price starts going up then they are accumulating losses so what the brokers will first do is that they will start asking for more and more margin they will start asking people to put in put up more and more money to cover their losses because the brokers will not take the losses right they want the end customers who are actually owning the trades to take care of the losses so what happens is if there is a rapid movement to the upside 
then the brokers will immediately issue the margin calls and if the price goes keeps going up before people can bring in more money into their account or they may not be in a position to bring in that additional money into their account the brokers themselves in order to protect themselves and their capital they will start closing the positions so all the traders who were short the stocks will lose their capital because somebody sold the shares as the example that i gave at 100 dollars but they the broker will buy back the shares at 130 dollars reason being that based on their account size and the capital they have there in their account the brokers calculated that either this person should bring in more money or a max loss of 30 dollar per share is max what he can take otherwise we will start taking the loss so because of these reasons because the short sellers have to buy back their shares right and and it, it becomes very scary because when price price starts going up when the price starts going down you at least know it will go down and stop at zero but if you look at the short squeeze examples i mean look at gamestop gamestop was trading at one time at under 10 dollars after short so so if you buy shares of gamestop where can it go it can it can max go down to zero right so you can lose a max of ten dollars per share that's it but when the short squeeze happened gamestop went to three hundred dollars plus so imagine somebody who had shorted the gamestop shares at ten dollars or even twenty dollars they made almost a three hundred dollar loss per share and nobody can take those kind of losses so somewhere between $20 and $300 they would have had to cover their position and when they cover their position short position that means they are buying shares of gamestop and as you keep buying shares of gamestop the price will start going up so when a short squeeze happens it's a really really bad time for the short sellers because their losses can be infinite and when there is a huge uh, short interest means lot of shares are sold short then when you want to buy back very little shares are available to buy back right so people may not be willing to sell that means you have to offer higher and higher prices to be able to buy back your positions and that shoots up the price like anything that's why we saw for gamestop the price going from under ten dollars to over three hundred dollars within a span of few days so this is the concept of uh short selling and basically what triggers the short uh, selling now let's head over to the finvis uh, stock screener let's actually look at the finvis platform and see how we can identify what settings we can use for the screener so here we are looking at the finvis platform now uh, i'll leave a link to this in the description um, this is the free version that I'm using. You can actually uh, try using the platform and if you like it, you can go for the paid version as well. So once you're on the platform, what you need to do is you need to go to the screener tab over here. And once you're at the screener tab, you will see four tabs here. Now I like to be on the all tab because I get all the filters available on one screen. And here, in order to identify the stocks, which are basically potentially uh, set up for a short squeeze uh, what we do is we go and set the float short and uh, there are there are multiple values available here but i like to put it over 25 or 20 percent now any stock which has a uh, 20 percent or more than 20 percent short float doesn't mean uh, it's going to undergo a squeeze immediately but i like to keep a track of stocks which have a short interest more than 20 percent so they kind of form part of my watch list and and i can keep a tab on those stocks to see if the short interest increases further then it is uh, getting set up for a short squeeze so for now let's put the value to over 20 percent and now you can see that the earlier list of 8000 plus stocks now we are having only 113 stocks which satisfy this criteria and let's do one more thing now uh, first of all uh, once you've done this you go to the ownership tab and here you will be able to see the various stocks and their uh, the 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 short float which is there so you can sort this into descending order this is ascending so i'll click once again to get into descending order and you can see that some of the companies here have uh, almost 50% uh, short interest 
but we don't want to consider all companies because look at the market cap of this company it's 38 million dollars only so we want to look at big companies uh, not at all the companies the very small ones so i'm going to select the market cap as plus mid so we only now are going to list companies which have a market capitalization in excess of two billion dollars and now you can see here that these are pretty uh, uh, famous stocks sophie clover and and you can see that um, we we basically have the short floats being represented here so i had discussed a concept um, of short interest and then we also discussed the short ratio so here i'll explain uh, look at sophie okay look at sophie here what is the uh, short float it is 46.69 percent that means out of all the outstanding shares which are tradable that is the float so 60.57 million shares are there which are tradable okay all shares you have to understand which have been issued by a company are not tradable on the markets because some of the shares are preferred shares and other kinds of shares which can't be traded so float represents the shares this the portion of shares which are tradable and that is 60.57 million uh, shares and out of that we will take this as almost 50 percent so almost half of the shares have been borrowed and sold that means that around 30 million shares uh, have been sold if you want to go exact to 45 percent it will be slightly less so about 27 million 26 27 million shares which are shorted that thing if you divide by the average volume right so we have about 27 million shares or 28 million shares short and daily we are trading 7.6 million shares if you divide these two numbers you will get to somewhere around 3.7 so 3.7 basically means that if you go with the average daily volume, how much time would it take for all the short sellers to get rid of their positions? That means at the end of those transactions, how many days would it take at the, at the current average volume to get rid of all the shorted shares? So if I am trying to identify companies which are going to potentially have a short squeeze i am just don't have to look at this number i also need to look at the short ratio because if you look at clover right this will not go into a short squeeze the reason is look at the short ratio 0.71 so although 36 37 percent almost shares are shorted and and the total float is 112 million dollars right 70 percent will be about 75 80 million uh, uh, sorry uh, 37 percent of this is going to be about 40 42 million uh, shares but look at the daily average volume daily you're trading almost 58 million shares of this stock that means in a single trading day if the 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 short sellers based on the average volumes if the short sellers wanted to cover up their positions they would be able to cover their positions based on the average volumes in less than a day so if a short squeeze at all is triggered on clover it's not going to continue for long because the volumes are so high as compared to the number of shares that need to be bought back that it's going to last only for a few hours whereas if you look uh, at something like fizz based on this average volume you can see it takes about 13 days 13 days for the short sellers to cover their positions so if a short squeeze is triggered on fizz it's going to relatively last for a longer number of days so this gives you a fair idea where the short squeeze is really becoming significant because the percentage itself should not be used you need to use it in conjunction with the short ratio because short ratio will represent the 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 amount of time for which the short squeeze that environment will last okay because if the environment doesn't last for long then the then the price movement that will happen will not be uh, too much so right now i shorted by the percentage you can also short it by you can also sort it by the short ratio so we can see that uh, um, I mean, this uh, IGMS has a 20% uh, short float, but it's got a short ratio of 18 days, more than 18 days, because the average volumes are low. So when you are looking for short squeezes, just don't look at the uh, short interest numbers. Also look at the short ratio, because that gives you an idea as to how uh, strong the squeeze will be for how much will it be able to last because if the short squeeze is triggered and based on the volumes it gets over within a couple of hours then it's very difficult to take advantage of that whereas if the short squeeze continues for two three days because the based on the average traded volumes the volume of shorted shares is so high that even if the short sellers want because you have to understand why is volume important 
any short seller who wants to buy back shares needs somebody to sell those shares at that time right so somebody should be willing to get rid of their shares and those people who are long the shares will come to sell the shares only at the average volumes right so all of a sudden if all short sellers want to buy back shares they are not going to be able to buy back right so what happens here is you you have to understand the psychology if i put you in a position where you are short shares and you're making losses do you think you're going to patiently wait for 3 4 hours or do you think you will patiently wait for 4 or 5 days so people if they are forced to be in short positions and they have to look at their losses growing for 4 to 5 days it's it's really painful for them and so these people will be ready to give any amount of money to just get rid of their positions whereas if all this short squeeze gets over within a couple of hours then the price movement that we'll see to the upside will not be that large because whatever pain these short sellers were feeling is going to get over within 2 to 3 hours because the volumes are so high that whatever positions they want to close they'll be able to close it within the next 2 or 3 hours and there's no reason really for them to jack up the prices and offer anything to get rid of their positions whereas if the same short sellers if they have to hold their positions overnight for multiple days the very next day they will be ready to pay a very high premium price just to be able to get rid of their position and and those are the cases if you look at any of the short squeezes where the stocks went up 10 20 30 times you will always find that those short squeezes did not happen in a single day they continued over a couple of days sometimes over a week and happened in multiple phases so looking at the short ratio is definitely very very important just looking at the float short gives you an idea that there is a lot of uh, short selling around a particular stock but then that should not be the only consideration while deciding uh, whether a stock uh, whether you can profit off a, a short squeeze or not so once now this is the screener one additional thing that i'll mention is uh, i'll i'll be creating a, another video that how do you basically trade the short squeeze but you should use this information in conjunction with the charts because the short squeeze as such is nothing it is telling us that the chances of a stock price once it starts going up that upward momentum is going to continue for some time because the short sellers will have to cover up so you need to club this information with the rest of your trading strategy this you can't just use it alone that just because some stock has a high short interest it's the price is going to go up that's not going to happen so i will be creating another video with a complete trading strategy that you can club with the short squeeze and the short squeeze will basically act as one parameter which will improve the probability of us making a profit so i'll be creating another uh, video for that uh, if you have any questions around how a short squeeze works or you want me to share more examples uh, as to how the the short squeeze works uh, please let me know and uh, you can tweak around with the settings on the screen uh, usually when i am trying to find the short squeeze stocks i just don't use these two settings i also look for the average price to be above price and uh, uh, a couple of other things but that is then what forms the trading strategy that i am talking about so stay tuned i'll be putting up another video with the entire trading strategy how i basically club the short squeeze setup with the rest of the setup to come up with um, um, profitable trades so if you have any questions uh, please leave them down in the comments any suggestions and inputs are most welcome uh, if you like this video please share it with your family and friends and uh, i'll see you i'll catch up with you guys in the next video uh, thank you so much for your time